Um, this morning, um, Plague in Diachronic and Interdisciplinary Perspective. So the session was organized by Joyce Gutsmittel Schumann, who is the main organizer. Um, also Christina Lee, who unfortunately cannot be here today. Um, Sasha Kaki, and also by myself, uh, Marcel Keller. Um, so the first um, half of the session in the morning uh, will be chaired by Doris Gutsmittel Schumann, and the second one uh, by me, and the third one uh, by Sasha. Um, and we will have 15 minutes uh, for discussion after every part, so before lunch break, um, before the coffee break, before the lunch break, and at the end. So, um, for this discussions, uh, we would like to ask the speakers to stay in front or near the front um, to ask the questions then later. Um, if you are using um, social media, you can use uh, these hashtags uh, for Twitter and so on. <laughs> so, in the first uh, introduction now, um, I would like to sketch briefly through the history of Blake research in the last uh, 100 years, around 100, 100 years. Um, and we will start with um, the end of the 19th century with um, Alexandre Yazin, um, who was during the third pandemic, uh, the Hong Kong plague, um, discovering the bacterium um, Yersinia pestis as the causative agent of the plague, and therefore yeah, starting all the biological research on plague. Some years later then, uh, Simon um, discovered the transmission route uh, via the black rat and the red flea. Um, now we will skip some decades to the 50s. And here in uh, 51 and the later years, um, the first manual of the World Health Organization on plague was published by Politzer. So we can here <coughs> see, and there were also other um, plague studies later published by the uh, World Health Organization, that we still have plague around as a, also as a re-emerging disease in some countries. In the same year, there was a publication by De Vignard, um, who established the BioWars based on the biochemical um, features of the different strains of Yersinia pestis. In '69, then, there was uh, the first uh, important publication about uh, Justinianic plague, so the as we call it, the first pandemic, by Le Goff and Biraben. Oh. Uh, we skipped it, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it was uh, basically this more or less the same, um, where Twig and later Hurley um, published uh, their books. Uh, where they argued that uh, plague was not caused by Yersinia pestis, but probably by other um, infective agents like smallpox or something else. Um, in the, in 98, there was a publication by Mark Achtmann, um, where he could show that uh, Yersinia pestis recently evolved uh, from by pseudotuberculosis and was um, responsible for the different plague outbreaks, the three different pandemics. 
And also in the same year, we got the first um, attempt to find ancient plague DNA in human remains of the Black Death. In the same year also, there was the first try to link uh, human immunity alleles to the Black Death by Stevens. And then in the 2000 years, um, the publications are piling up. So first uh, by Waldron, are plague pits of particular use uh, for paleoepidemiologists. Um, he refused this uh, based on this study. We will later show uh, other studies. In the same year also we got the first uh, complete genome published of Yersinia pestis. And again um, here with Scott and Duncan and then in, in the next year by Cohn um, Again, publications of scholars showing that uh, another infective agent might be the cause of uh, the Black Death and not Yersinia pestis. Um, also another uh, epidemiology study in this year on the Black Death. Then in 2003, there was a review by Galvani and Slatkin, where they more or less finally could show um, that this uh, specific immunity allele, CCR5, um, is not related to Black Death, uh, but probably to smallpox. In the next year, Achtmann again published an important study where he established um, the nomenclature of branches for the Yersinia strains instead of the biovars. Um, because as you can see, the biovars are not really reflecting uh, the biology of the strains. In the same year, there was uh, published the PhD thesis by Stathakopoulos on the um, also on famines and epidemics, but mainly on the Justinianic plague in the Mediterranean area. And in the same year, um, there was a big study of Gilbert uh, and colleagues where they extensively tried to find Yersinia pestis in different uh, contexts, archaeological contexts, but couldn't find uh, any um, hints for it and therefore doubted the studies of Drancourt and Raoul that were published uh, before. And finally, in the same year, uh, Ole Benediktov published his uh, Complete History of the Black Death. I think the title speaks for itself. In the next year, um, after all of the ancient DNA results uh, were doubted. Um, Wichmann and Grube published the first uh, detection of ancient Yersinia pestis DNA in skeletal remains from the Justinianic plague in uh, Germany. We will later hear also about this. Um, in 2007, there was this uh, big study, uh, this uh, collective volume published by Little um, about the uh, Justinianic plague. And in the next year, similar to this one by Vivian Nutton about uh, uh, Black Death in the late medieval time. And uh, in this year also Sharon De Witt um, published together with Wood another uh, study on epidemiology of the plague um, here linking um, to frailty. Like in the next year also on the age distribution in plague burials. And finally in 2010 also uh, Benediktov again published a book um, where he disproved uh, all the alternative hypotheses about the causative agent of plague and finally, 
um, arguing for Yersinia pestis. In the same year, we got also a big study of Morelli and colleagues uh, about uh, modern strains of uh, Yersinia pestis um, and uh, phylogenetic uh, tree of these strains. In the same year, also uh, Hench published a study with uh, colleagues uh, showing again proof for uh, Yersinia pestis DNA in uh, late medieval plague burials. In 2011, there was a similar study by uh, Bose and colleagues um, where they published the first draft genome. So now we are step stepping from the genetic area to the genomic area in this field. Um, in 2012, a study by um, Sasha Kaki and Dominique Castex about burial practice in different contexts of the plague. In the next year, a study by Habeck and colleagues where they could co confirm the first results by Wichmann and Gruppe about the Chisinianic plague and also showing where it falls on the, on the phylogenetic tree. Uh, in the same year, a big study by Kui and colleagues, again uh, about modern strains of plague, um, here linking the differences in mutation rate um, to demographic changes and uh, poly the polytomies to a specific uh, pandemics of the plague. And in the same year, also a publication by Hoff. Hammer and uh, Lars Valle, who is, is also here today, um, um, questioning the common tr transmission paradigm um, that was established by uh, Simon in the uh, 19th century. In 2013, uh, also a collective volume uh, in a broader geographical and interdisciplinary approach about the Black Death. And uh, again, on the same Justinianic uh, gray field, the publication by Wagner and colleagues, where they published the first um, complete genome of this time. Now we are coming to the um, last year, where we got this huge impact in, in this field, I think, um, with the study by Simon Rasmussen, we will later uh, hear also about this, uh, where they could show um, that we can find Yersinia pestis DNA already in the Bronze Age in, hope, in the whole Eurasian region. And also in last year and beginning of this year, um, there were two studies by Schmidt uh, and colleagues and Binken and colleagues uh, trying to link uh, climate change uh, during the early medieval and the late medieval time um, to the pandemics. Another study on epidemiology um, where they uh, tried, so Dominique Castex and Sasha Kaki um, tried to uh, integrate these different uh, studies um, together to a whole picture. And later then, um, two publications by Seifert and colleagues and boss and colleagues uh, about plague in the late medieval time and early modern time where they could show um, that uh, the strains are probably staying in Europe um, and maybe establishing local reservoirs. And finally, another study um, by Spirou and colleagues um, following the study of Bose and colleagues, uh, where she could show um, 
that the strains are already splitting in Europe and um, also a European strain is probably going back from the uh, second pandemic back to uh, Asia to form the third pandemic later. So now we are here and I think we will learn a lot about plague in the next uh, hours and who knows what's coming up in the next years. Oh,